much. Okay. <laughs> okay, Matt, go ahead. Let's go live. There's a couple of blocks. Great. Okay. Well, welcome everybody um, to the first uh, meeting of the Governor's Advisory Council uh, for 2021. I want to welcome everybody here today. I'm Susie Hamilton. I am the chair of the Governor's Council, and uh, I will be just sort of, as usual, moderating our discussion today. Um, Catherine is, has got the agenda for us. Uh, do you mind sharing that screen? Not at all. Um, and Matt, if I may, I just got a, a note. Um, uh, Camille Bourne needs to be able to access uh, the meeting and I believe the screen sharing uh, component. Um, okay, so um, if Camille, if you're out there and you're still having problems, <laughs> just let us know. Okay, thanks. Okay, oh, there she is. Okay, great. Um, okay, well, welcome again, and we're going to get started. There's been um, some exciting stuff happening, obviously, in the film community uh, across and production community across the state. In recent months, we have uh, we appear to be at capacity in some locations, which is wonderful news, uh, trending in a really good direction for the end of 2020 and for projections for 2021. And I'm going to let Guy Gaster get into all of that. Um, and our group um, with Lauren and Eric and Camille and Tim has been working diligently on uh, on a, a, what I would call maybe a, like a sizzle reel for um, for testimonials um, from North Carolinians who work in the industry and who are positively impacted by the industry. Um, but today, I think we're going to show an example of other uh, testimonial style um initiatives that other states have done. So with that, I'm going to let Catherine first, uh, we're going to launch into the report. Catherine, is that correct? I need to do a quick roll call. Okay, perfect. Um, so if you'll just allow me. Okay. Susie Hamilton, present. Uh, Amy Tiemann. Here. Beth Petty. Bill Vassar, Bill Sappho, Chris Cooney, Dale Williams, Darla McGlamory. Present. David Burris. I know he's not coming. He already let us know. Chip Hackler. Here. Eric Johnson. Here. Herman Stone. John Bankson. Here. Johnny Griffin. Yes. Judy Gerard. Here. Lana Garland. Here. Here. Lauren Vilchik. Vilchik. Here. Michael Magaha. Michael. Rebecca Clark. Rebecca Clark. Here. Robert Newton. Here. Tim Bourne. Todd Thorne. Hunter Widener. I am here. Jonas Pate. Here. Lindsay Bierman, also absent today. And Trey Rabin. Here. Okay, thank you all. So um, I believe actually the first agenda item is for Guy to give us an update from the film office. Great, thanks, Catherine. Um, are you guys running the, the slides that were sent? Matt, if you have them, that would be appreciated. Sure. Uh, while that uh, does get added, I do want to share that um, 
the Cape Fear Workforce Development Group uh, in conjunction with NC Works and uh, the local IOTC 491 uh, will be holding a job information session, uh, not a fair, but more of a sharing of uh, what kinds of opportunities may be available in general uh, for uh, within the uh, film industry. Uh, that event will be taking place uh, virtually uh, next Monday. Um, and so very excited to see how this goes as part of uh, the workforce development uh, initiatives that have been discussed and uh, being needed uh, here as we continue to, as um, Susie Hamilton mentioned, as Ch uh, Chairwoman Hamilton mentioned, uh, having um, a lot of interest in the state. Uh, so looking back real quick, now that we've got this up, uh, here is kind of a recap of 2020. I, I will state that uh, those of you who have been paying particular attention to this, uh, the, the final spending number uh, is lower than what we were projecting the last time we all got together. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it happens frequently. Uh, some of the projects that we're hoping to be on the ground um, in 2020 and start some of their uh, production uh, got delayed uh, a little more. So, uh, but again, we eclipsed 100 million uh, in spending um, and saw, and as a reminder, that is directly by the productions. That does not include any multiplier effect um, no auxiliary spending, no ripple. Uh, these are directly the numbers that are spent by the productions themselves in the state. Uh, and did once again have filming uh, across all eight of the state's prosperity zones. Uh, looking now at uh, how 2021 is shaping up here on the next slide, uh, you'll see that we are already um, at least halfway to with the number of projects that have filed intent to film forms uh, here with the state. Uh, 12 of those projects um, have been approved for the state's uh, grant rebate program. Uh, we're already looking at 2,500 plus crew hires, which is a key number. Uh, and the, the big one there, 192 million uh, already being committed to the state. Uh, at this point. Um, and, and then we will have filming uh, projected at, so far in seven of the eight of the state's prosperity zones. And I have no doubt we'll pick up that eighth one, um, you know, as we continue on. But uh, this is certainly shaping up to be a big year for uh, filming in the state. So looking at how does this compare to uh, previous years on the next slide, uh, you'll see the, the charts that you've kind of become familiar with, uh, trying to keep consistency here. Uh, the direct in-state spending, again, at 192 will be our highest number um, since the uh, grant program was created. Uh, and please note, that 192 is what is being projected as of now or has been uh, said is moving forward as of now. We, we uh, fully anticipate that number to continue to grow as we move forward uh, with it. So again, uh, this is going to be a very strong year uh, for the state. Uh, and then looking at the job numbers here on the next slide, uh, sitting at about 13,000 uh, total. Uh, that is uh, buoyed, of course, by a number of background um, opportunities uh, for projects, which coincidentally are going down a little bit, as you can imagine, uh, because of COVID-19. Uh, but uh, still, I, I think we will have uh, very strong numbers here as well that will correspond with the spending and also those uh, full-time positions, uh, primarily those crew positions, will continue to uh, be high. So, you know, that is how things are shaping up. Uh, we have a very active uh, project recruitment pipeline right now. Um, 
and we have for the first time as i mentioned last time we got together uh, we've started out with projects on the ground here in the first quarter of the calendar year that is something we've not traditionally had as strong of right now but uh, ha have definitely seen that increase and have a number of projects uh, still shooting uh, as well as some very big projects that are starting pre-production right now. Uh, so again, uh, sorry to repeat it, but I think it bears repeating. Uh, it's definitely looking like a very strong year uh, here in calendar year 21. As that always- great news, Guy, thank you. Yes, yes, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, if you would like more information uh, on any of these numbers uh, that were shared, as well as uh, happy to share information on the um, virtual uh, information session that will be taking place uh, next week um, via Zoom, thanks in part to the Cape Fear uh, Workforce Development, Cape Fear Area Workforce Development, as well as uh, the local IOTSE. Um, one thing I want to call attention to in your first slide, the last bullet, uh, related to all of the all uh, eight prosperity zones in the state uh, had job opportunities and, and activity. Um, what and I know some of you may know this, some of you may not. I just call it a t call attention to it because what that is is the state has established eight uh, economic development zones in North Carolina that comp that a um, uh, make up all 100 counties in North Carolina and um, that it's established, I believe, under the Department of Commerce. So um, to have filmed in all eight prosperity zones means that's a big deal. And, and if I understood you correctly, Guy, we actually do that uh, with some frequency. Absolutely. Uh, you know, certainly we're not quite touching all 100 counties individually, but we are definitely touching all of those prosperity zones. Uh, some of you may have referred to these in the past as regions, uh, you know, however you want to say it as a grouping, uh, but, but it is uh, ones that, uh, again, this will be, uh, as I said, we're right now at seven of the eight in this calendar year. Already, uh, yeah. Uh, already, so yeah. It, it's, we typically touch at least six of the eight um, and many times go all eight with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question. Um, when you're talking about filming across the eight prosperity zones, you're not talking about the ones uh, recruiting the projects that benefit from the incentive necessarily. Correct. I'm talking all any and all filming. Like commercials yeah. and yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Okay, now, Catherine, um, you want to move on with the report? Um, well, I think we wanted to have a quick update from the subcommittee. Okay. Uh, and Eric, maybe do his presentation, and then um, we'll go into the report and open discussion. Okay. We'll kick off and then hand it to Camille. Um, as we've mentioned in, in previous meetings, you know, this idea, uh, as uh, was mentioned earlier, a sizzle reel or promotional video uh, campaign, just to um, bring more awareness to, to all of us um, and to all of our, you know, uh, citizens about the benefits of film and television work. Uh, some of the direct and some of the intangible. Um, and that's something we're working on and, and Camille and Lauren can speak more to that. But just to give you an idea, you know, there have been reports, um, you know, over the years, but, but you know, if a picture's worth a thousand words, then what's a video worth? And um, the Louisiana film industry, <clears throat> pardon me, has uh, done a good job of, of, of a campaign similar to what we're attempting to achieve. So rather than talk about it, just want to uh, share that with you and have, have us uh, experience it together. And then immediately after that, uh, Camille and Lauren can uh, take over. So I'm gonna share my screen and hope for the best here.
STEM industry is unlike any other. When they come here, they can really increase your sales in a short amount of time. I can't say that for any other business. I was probably doing around $30,000 a month in sales. It jumped up to around $80,000 when I got into the film industry. In 2012, the film industry was producing about 40 to 50 percent of our income here. At its peak, the film industry brought in 25 percent of our yearly revenue. The restaurants benefit, the shops benefit, the gas station, the grocery store, all those people benefit. They go to the cleaners, the laundromat, whatever services that they need while they're here. One little movie might have 200 people over here. These people got to eat. I had to hire more waitresses and I had to hire more cooking staff. I'd say they give me 20 percent more business, just the movie industry. The film industry will bring anywhere from 60 to 80,000 per movie just on drapery and furniture. They don't come in and buy $100 worth of things. You know, they'll come in and buy thousands and thousands of dollars. It just means you don't stop. It just means, you know, every day everyone's working, you know, open to close. It really keeps things humming. Over 90 years of business, 2013 was probably our best year. Movies accounted for about 25% of our sales that year. I think it was $1.46 million just in movie sales. I need tourists, and film industry sends me tourists. When the year one was here, we were sending two tractor trailer loads of building materials a day to that set for probably two months. They spent probably three to four million dollars with us just on building materials alone. When they filmed here, every business on our main street benefited dramatically. My business increased 65 percent. It's not something that we can just say, oh, it was just an extra income, that it's okay if it's not there. No, this is a big deal. In the last year, monthly, we've probably dropped 45 percent. It just clicked off like a light switch. Last year, we probably did three to four hundred thousand with the film industry. This year, I'd say less than a hundred thousand. When we really noticed it was when uh, Disney pulled Pirates of the Caribbean. It was going to be about six hundred thousand dollars. That's like selling fifty houses worth of material, uh, and you know, just one company in three months, which, which you know doesn't happen in the home building sector. Losing thirty to forty percent of a sector of business is a huge hit. It's not a bonus or a little bit of gravy. It's a decade's worth of business that just went away. It's a domino effect. It's everybody. A donut shop, a gas station, a grocery store. This year, uh, we don't have any jobs. All of our trucks are sitting out back. We have to start thinking, should I you know, leave town and go to Atlanta like everybody else? It's, it's a big loss because it's very hard to, to regenerate that kind of money. You've taken away a good paying customer and replaced it with nothing. Impacts us business-wise, it impacts our personnel, it impacts our family, it impacts every vendor that I buy something from. All of the industries that grew with film are likely now going to shrink. Why is it that you would take an industry out of our economy when it's creating jobs, when it's creating business? Not a lot of industries that can fill that void, that can just come in and bring all this work overnight like the film industry can. It's less tax revenue, it's less money going to employees, less money going to purchases. I think the key factor to remember is that it's a trickle effect. I mean, it, it really benefits the whole state. I just want the legislators to know that the movie business is uh, it's a difference maker. It changes everything. I support the Louisiana film industry. I support Louisiana film. I support Louisiana film. I support Louisiana film. I totally support the Louisiana film industry. It's a no-brainer to me. That's awesome. Very moving, impactful. And I think we want to take some extra steps. I mean, this focuses so much on economic impact, but you know, as Guy was mentioning earlier, you know, job creation and whatnot. I'd like to see us 
maybe not as a body, but individuals and more, you know, reach out to, to folks in the various prosperity regions and help recruit and, and educate and help create opportunities for, for participation. It's not just that it brings income in, but it creates amazing job opportunities in all sorts of fields, as you can see here, ones that you wouldn't normally associate with film, but, but that are very much uh, the crux and the foundation of this industry. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to, to the team and uh, I'll be quiet. One thing that uh, um, about that video was it focused mainly on features and I think if we were going to work on a video, we could expand it beyond just features to series, um, narrative series like Genesis and, um, and reality-based series as well. Yeah, um, that's a really great point. Um, and so with that, I'm going to kind of walk you guys through the plan that we've assembled so far for how we can make something like that for our industry here. Um, but real quick introduction, because I don't know everybody personally. Uh, my name is Camille Bourne. I'm a graduate student at UNCSA studying under Lauren Vilchik. Um, I'm getting my MFA in creative producing, which is how I initially got involved in this, but I'm also a fourth generation uh, film industry kid. So uh, born and raised in Wilmington, this issue has been a lot to me for my whole life. So, um, you know, I'm gonna walk you guys through a little bit of what we've been discussing uh, in our subcommittee. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen real quick. Can you guys see that okay? All right, cool. Yes. Um, all right, so one of the things we've been talking a lot about in our little subcommittee is this idea of, you know, how can we communicate to lawmakers just how vital this industry is, not just to the cast and crew members that, you know, people initially think about, but that wide array of citizens like the one we just saw that come from a bunch of different backgrounds. And we've determined that a concentrated effort to produce a video campaign like that, so not just, you know, one, but a series rather, um, will speak directly to the diverse group of North Carolinians that are impacted by the entertainment industry here, including, you know, TV, series, commercials, even, you know, everything, not just features, um, you know, so it'll uniquely get the citizens messages across by, you know, letting them tell their own stories and then we're just there to listen. Um, and so one of the first things that we did um, is we asked just some people that we know to send in some brief videos filmed on their cell phones discussing, you know, what North Carolina entertainment means to them. And they were mostly cast and crew members, you know, just people that were in our day-to-day -day purview. But we also got some people like Dan Browley of the Kukaloris Film Festival in Wilmington and uh, Corporal Ronald Evans from the Wilmington Police Department. And overall, these, you know, just kind of preliminary videos showed us that the general public is really engaged and interested in this issue, especially in places like Wilmington. They're informed and they want to be a part of this conversation because it touches everybody here. Um, and so with the intel that we gathered from this sort of first pass, now we needed to assess what else the videos would have to have so that we could then produce and communicate their stories in a more unified sort of polished product. Um, and so, you know, what we got was a really great uh, first step, but, you know, like I briefly mentioned, we really need to diversify our group of interviewees across all fronts. Um, we need the local business owners, the hospitality workers, people that have never even been on a film set who have been impacted by this issue. Um, and we need them to share their stories with us just as much as we need to hear from the people directly involved in productions. Um, also, you know, people like to think of North Carolina entertainment as, you know, just Wilmington and Charlotte. Um, but as, you know, we mentioned, Wilmington is pretty close to at capacity right now. Uh, and it reaches every corner of the state, rural and urban, all eight of those prosperity zones. Um, so one thing we will be doing for this campaign is traveling all across North Carolina uh, to get stories from everywhere. You know, this issue matters to every representative's constituents, no matter where they are coming from. Uh, so, you know, we also want to, of course, show that the entertainment industry, you know, favors merit and talent over identity politics. It's diverse and thriving. It's got opportunities for everybody. And, you know, it needs to get an accurate sense of who works in the entertainment industry in North Carolina. And that's everybody. Um, so, you know, diversity across all fronts is really important here. 
Um, and then one of the other actions that we'll need to take in this next leg of the project is to put our money where our mouth is. And that means hiring folks to make sure that we're getting the best product possible. So, you know, North Carolina is filled with so many talented, informed filmmakers, and they just want to give back to this cause because it matters to them on a really personal level. Um, so we want to bring them on board not only to deliver an attractive final product, but also to showcase all of the amazing artistry that is just sitting here waiting to be tapped into by whoever, you know, kind of can get here first. Um, let's see. All right, so, um, you know, real quick, we just kind of want to talk about who exactly those filmmakers we will bring aboard are. Um, we'll need an individual to serve as both the producer and the director. They will rally the troops, coordinate with the crew, locations, work with scheduling, make sure we're on time on budget, and obviously they'll coordinate with the council as well. Um, then we'll have a videographer who will capture all the visual footage, maintain that nice look and feel that we talked about to make it really look good. Um, you know, a sound mixer, someone who's going to capture the audio footage. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's a super, super simple crew, um, you know, and especially in these times if we're traveling all around we want to keep our unit nice and tight um, and then so we'll deliver all of the footage that we get to the editing and um, the finishing house which Eric is going to lead the charge on since he works with Trailblazer Studios out of Raleigh. And just want um, to be clear that we're donating our services so this yes. isn't a, a money-making <laughs> venture for Trailblazer. Right right right. Thank um, you. Yeah, so, you know, um, and that's the other thing. So many people are so excited to just work on this message and kind of give back to the industry and the state in that way that we're going to get to a prospective budget a little later, but that's just assuming we have to pay for everything, which we likely won't because people are going to want to donate their time and resources, but we still want to be prepared for everything. Um, but yeah, so, you know, the editor and then Eric and his team, they will work on cutting together those final videos and delivering it back to the council so that we can then in turn deliver it to the legislature. Um, so now that we've talked a little bit about, you know, kind of who we need behind the scenes, I want to talk a little bit more in depth about some of those interviewees. We mentioned how we're going to expand that group of people. Um, we've got the cast and crew, obviously, um, but they themselves are kind of separated into different categories, all of which, you know, work to serve our story. They, you know, have those that are really fiercely dedicated to staying here, but, you know, a lot of times that's meant a loss of work or a loss of income. Like they've had to sacrifice to stay here. Uh, and then there's also the folks that have been forced to take work elsewhere, places like Atlanta, places like Charleston. Um, and their stories are really important for kind of tugging on the heartstrings of the people that are watching this video. You know, some of them have to spend weeks, if not months away from their families. Others make the six plus hour drive to and from Atlanta every weekend just to spend time with their kids. I mean, you know, it's easy to see how that's definitely an emotional appeal. And, you know, as we all learned in high school English class, you got to have that balance of, you know, all the different aspects that make your argument work. And this emotional thing is very real for a lot of people. Um, and then we also, you know, have the folks that are behind the scenes in a kind of different way, the training and support uh, that goes from agents and managers to, you know, teachers who are inspiring the next generation of North Carolinian artists at state schools with big film programs like UNCW and UNCSA. I happen to know one really, really cool teacher at UNCSA, but you know, that's beside the point. Um, you know, but there's also the angle of law enforcement and security. Uh, and it's really interesting to talk to them because they view it you know, as a chance to get really unique community engagement going. And I think that especially right now is something that people are gonna wanna hear is how is this creating a really interesting connection between law enforcement and the people they're serving. And that connection starts on a film set sometimes. Um, and then we also, you know, have the local businesses like the ones that we just saw in that video. So I won't touch too much on it, but you know, it's, it's really important for these businesses. It's, you know, not just, where they stay, where they eat, but it's the little thrift stores where they might find props or costumes or anything like that. And when people talk about how much of the entertainment industry like revenue comes from secondhand spending, this is often what they're talking about. And I think that if you're just talking about numbers, this is gonna be really important to communicate uh, to the legislatures that this is where a lot of the impact actually comes from. 
you know, and then there's also the locations. If you've ever been to Wilmington, you know how prevalent the walking tours of places are from TV shows that aired 20 years ago, but people still really love them. And it's still a really big driver of tourism here. Um, but this goes beyond that, you know, it's about the residents who welcome crews into their homes, totally transform it into a character's home for a few months sometimes. Um, it's about local businesses who can then say, hey, this is where so-and-so shopped on episode four. Uh, it's about those court heart, courthouses, parks, um, the museum here in Wilmington just had an exhibit on North Carolina film. So all of these different places you might not initially think about that really have a stake in seeing their hometown displayed on a screen, whether that's you know a movie screen, television, streaming, anything. So, you know, overall, uh, we've got a lot of people to talk to here, uh, but each one is such a critical part of our story and really communicating that this affects every North Carolinian everywhere in all eight of those prosperity zones. Um, and the prosperity zones thing is super interesting. It's something I hadn't heard of before right now. Um, so with that, we'll probably go back and look at this travel itinerary a little bit. Um, but this is just something we had put together for what the travel itinerary might look like for this project in order to make sure that we talk to everybody we need to. Um, you know, and you'll see that we've got those hubs I talked about as well as some places in the triad where there's lots of, you know, businesses like Eric's and other rental houses and schools. Um, and we do have Atlanta and Charleston on here as well. And that's simply because from the footage we got in those cell phone videos, we realized it's a lot more powerful to hear people out of town saying, I miss my family, I want to go home, I haven't been home in three months, than it is to, you know, kind of hear them talking about it theoretically. Um, you know, and then obviously, of course, with the travel comes the question of how much that travel is going to cost. Um, and, you know, like I said, we can assume that there's probably going to be a decent amount of donated services here and there. But, you know, as producers, we want to prep for everything. Um, so this is just kind of a preliminary budget that we've put together. Um, and this covers a travel stipend for the three traveling crew members, which would be the producer, the sound mixer, and the videographer, just to make sure that their gas, accommodations, and such are taken care of. Um, we've got the miscellaneous expenses, and this is where I can imagine we could probably get some donated equipment, you know, things like that, um, vehicle rentals even, because, you know, places like the Enterprise here by the Wilmington Airport are super film friendly. They work with us a lot. Um, and then things like music licensing and stock footage that who knows, there might be a North Carolina musician that's really excited about this cause and wants to you know, let us use some of their music. Um, and then one thing I do wanna to touch on with the hiring rates for the personnel, um, you know, as we touched on, we've got a lot of really talented folks in this state. Um, and a lot of them are recent graduates of those state schools I mentioned. And they will work a lot cheaper than, you know, a professional who's got several years of really big project experience under their belt. Um, so we've already been talking to a few School of the Arts alumni who are really interested in helping us out with this project. And one thing just from my own personal experience, I realized being a student on campus is people really want to stay here. They're just you know, they don't know how to start looking for the opportunities. They don't know what tools they have. So that's why I'm super excited about, you know, that event next Monday that IATSE is putting together. Like those are the kind of things that, you know, getting a student involved with this project will then spread the word that there is energy in the film industry here. People are trying to make it better. And with that, then students maybe will wanna invest and stay here a little bit more. And we need them, they're the future of the industry. Um, we also just feel that it's, you know, it's important to compensate people for their work so that they can dedicate themselves to this on a full-time basis for the duration of this project. And as you'll see in a second, um, you know, this can be completed in a really quick turnaround, but it's going to require a really concentrated time and effort. Um, and people will be more willing to give that to us if they're paid fairly for it, you know, uh, which that just makes sense. Um, you know, and then we've got our contingency because we want to abide by the, you know, that Murphy's Law that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And, you know, so this could be a flat tire. This could be parking deck fees. And, you know, realistically in the world we're in, this could be a rapid test someone has to get while they're on the road. Um, so with all that in mind, you'll see the prospective grand total, assuming we're not going to get anything donated, is going to come in a little over $20,000. Um, and so speaking of a quick turnaround, really quick, um, let's just kind of look at what that timeline would look like. Uh, so 
you know, like I said, this project can be short and sweet and still look great. We've estimated that with a full-time commitment from all the crew, we could get this done and delivered in about one month. Um, so if we break that down, you'll see that during pre-production, the producer will book all the accommodations, finalize hiring the crew, schedule the interviews, and then we can move on to actually hitting the road and going to production, which we estimate will take about eight to 10 days as of right now, depending on how the scheduling plays out. Um, that hits all the cities and that itinerary we mentioned, gets all the content we need. Uh, and then it's on to post-production where only the producer and editor will stay on to work with Eric and his team. Uh, and they will focus on finalizing the project, taking feedback from the council, and then we'll make sure that you guys get a nice pretty package that you can then send to our friends in Raleigh. Um, and you know, just one last thing I do wanna say is, even though we're in the midst of pandemic, as we've already talked about a lot, productions are moving forward all across the country. And every day that goes by without a competitive incentive, North Carolina is losing more productions to neighboring states. So it's uncertain times and there's no getting around that, but we need to harness the energy of everything changing around us um, and utilize that to really go ahead and start trying to push for some positive change here that'll get people excited about the future rather than just guys fearing it. Um, and yeah, I mean, that about wraps it up for us. I'm gonna bring my fellow subcommittee members back in and we'll open up the floor to any questions or comments you have and I'll turn it back over to Susie. But yeah, that's all for us. Thank you guys so much for, for listening. <laughs> Outstanding, Camille. Thank you. Yes, awesome. Very good. Thank you. Lauren, she gets an A for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's being great at You're welcome, anything. Camille. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you got to give her an A. She didn't get an A yeah, for her that. A. <laughs> well, well, we'll make a recommendation as a committee that <laughs> she gets an A. Our first official. Well, that is a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous amount of work that you, you put into that. And I, I think that as a first pass um, draft at what we're looking at, I'm sure that um, or I hope that other uh, council members um, might want to weigh in with some suggestions, tweaks, opportunities. So I'll uh, turn it over to the floor. Um, how long a final video are you looking at? Um, we're still, yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead. we're still looking at about three minutes. It's really about the extent of what we need to cover. We're also looking at different pieces potentially, so they're focused on you know, different areas of the industry, which is why Camille set up the different areas so that if you see in the Louisiana video, they focus on vendors, um, cast and crew would be another one. If we intermix it all, that might be a version, but we need to make sure that we cover all the bases and see, is there one piece in here or is there several? Hi, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say if you need um, any uh, diverse representations that could go into the video, please let me know. I know, um, you know, a lot of people of color who could speak to that very thing. Most definitely. Thank you. Let's touch base uh, after so we can make sure we get those voices in here. Thank you, Anna. As a point of clarification, the Louisiana video you saw you showed uh, directs to louisianafilm.com, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Is that a, an industry organization? Because um, that seems different than their state uh, film office, which is part of Louisiana Entertainment overall. Is, is that correct or? Yeah, not sure. Just used it for inspiration, you know, focusing on the message more. And our main purpose, you know, is education. Uh, Do we know if the, that Louisiana video was successful in getting them to reinstate their incentive program down there? From what I understand it, it and other efforts were and have been. If I were going in to see a legislature guy, person, how would I rectify guys' numbers and, and celebrate those with a film that says everybody left? I would say because um, there, there was no program, then there's 
a version of a program that wasn't as robust as it was before. So it, it actually talks about how we're in an upswing and we need to ride the momentum to something that uh, harkens back to what was. So I think that there, all the evidence ties together to let's keep going and, and improving what we need to bring to incentivize the economy. Great, thank you, that helped. That, that chart guy that you used that showed the history and now we're on a, a little bit of an upswing, but the difference between where we were and where we still are is really powerful. Two questions. One is the intended audience uh, of this film, the legislature, is that the specific audience it's being made for? Yes, and yes, and it'll serve multiple purposes because uh, really it's, uh, you know, the, the various constituents need to understand, oh, that's what the film and television industry is. I thought it was this other thing and that's why I was against it. But now that I realize my neighbors and my grandkids and all are benefiting. So um, hopefully this one video obviously would, would uh, that would be a focus audience, but if done properly should, should open up uh, uh, to a wider uh, audience and be an educational tool that would even inspire folks to go into the industry, students and whatnot. Right, and if shown to the legislature, is it shown as an informational piece just to inform them about the film industry or is it with an ask? That's, uh, we're, we're gonna propose uh, both versions and see, uh, you know, the, the foundational point of this is to make sure that people understand what the impact was and the personal stories that have a wider impact. And so it's really one in the same. The specific ask um, is not necessarily ours to make. So we have to make sure as we put this piece together, how far do we go in making a specific ask and, or leave it up to the people who know what to craft as far as the next round. I mean, I have my ideas. We as a, a council have our ideas, but this really the main goal is does everyone realize the nature of the impact for all these different sectors of the community? We Johnny, do you, do you have a, a point of view on that? No, I just, um, I just didn't know if, you know, if, if this is, if I'm a, if I'm a legislature, legislator, and this is given to me, do I come away with it being like, oh, wow, okay, you know, I learned a lot about the film industry that I didn't know, and then I just put it on the shelf, or is it coming to me with, okay, now I'm expected to follow up by expanding the program, doing something different to the program, or is it just, I was informed for five minutes and then I put it away? Well, I think the goal is to make sure that it's specific to, it's used in, in context with an ask, but it's not the specific people making the ask who are being interviewed. And I will say one thing, you know, logging all the footage that we got from those cell phone videos, one of the really interesting things was how many times people kind of directly addressed the legislators on their own, you know, and not in like an overly formal way, but just bring me home, North Carolina. I know you can do it. I miss you. Or, you know, there was one guy that said, you know, he was filmed on set sitting on, you know, top of an Apple box and just said, you know, uh, we're here hard at work in Atlanta and I hope that you're hard at work in North Carolina because we want to come home. You know, it's, it's little things like that that were really interesting to see. They want to talk to these guys and gals on Capitol Hill, you know? So yeah, it's really interesting. Is anyone monitoring the hand raising function? Lana and I have our hands up, but maybe I'll just go and then maybe- Yes, go, go ahead, Amy. I think Johnny's question is an excellent question and I would just encourage us to keep coordinating the subcommittees and what we're going to discuss further down the road, you know, even in this meeting, but just keep in close contact. Um, and I had to step out for a minute. I don't think I missed this out, missed this though, is I would even think about um, our, if there are specific decision makers, we need to make sure that we are speaking to that we are getting people from their uh, regions to participate in this film. So I would just encourage us to be extremely strategic with even just 
the geography as well as, as all other considerations, um, including of course uh, the diversity uh, representation. All right. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Um, and for all the hard work, we're going to, um, this is an ongoing, you know, discussion. And I think we're also going to talk toward the end of the meeting about our next steps, um, set up uh, the uh, remaining meetings for 2021. There'll probably only be a couple of them. And then we will have a a discussion more focused on uh, a couple of subcommittees um, working it during that time between council meetings um, on a couple of issues. Such so it very and one of them would be this particular one that Camille and Eric and Lauren um, have uh, just um, presented to us. So with that, Catherine, I'm going to turn it back over to you, and we can okay. continue on. Yes, and I'll just say thanks for taking the lead. That is, um, and I understand there are lots of needs around uh, some of those tasks. So I would just say uh, we'll hopefully everyone will look at that and consider ways that within our networks, we may be able to support that project, um, whether it's donations, uh, etc. Okay, so I am going to pull up where we are with the report to date. It's still in draft form, but I do appreciate everyone who has um, given great feedback. And uh, one of the biggest changes that we did is um, add kind of this executive summary section. Um, because it's, a, it's fairly long, lengthy, there are a lot of detailed recommendations in there. Um, so I added this executive summary of recommendations and um, tried to show some data more front and center. And after reading through, I, I feel like there's kind of three major categories that all of the recommendations fall under. One is updating legislation. We've talked a lot about that in previous meetings. This data from Guy clearly shows that you know, work is increasing, opportunities are increasing, um, and we do want the lawmakers to understand the impact uh, and hopefully very forward thinking in how we're set up from a legislative standpoint to attract more film and be able to support more film in the state. Um, the second one is really improving infrastructure and the third is expanding the work and reach of the film office. So within this infrastructure, I think we all talked a lot about how um, it would be helpful to have greater flexibility around um, funding sources, a greater um, outreach and almost invitation to diverse filmmakers and um, creators to do their work here in North Carolina. And then I think part of that is obviously helping build up our workforce development resources because we do have some amazing universities and film schools and, you know, just bright dynamic people like Camille who, you know, if they could see a future of doing great work in North Carolina, you know, that work begets itself because we have more people <clears throat> staying here, investing here and doing their work here. Um, <clears throat> I did learn about the Filmed in North Carolina Fund that currently exists. And one thought is that could potentially be expanded to strengthen workforce development and sustainable support systems. Um, so Guy, you may be able to speak to this more, but um, it is made possible through a multi-agency partnership between the North Carolina Film Office, Kukaloris Film Foundation, and Artless Media. As I understand it, the Kukaloris is the um, fiscal agent, and they do currently uh, provide grants um, of varying sizes to um, 
diverse filmmakers and they support narrative, documentary, and experimental films, and it prioritizes funding for female African-American and Latinx filmmakers. One opportunity is to look at, is that um, something that could be expanded so we could reach and attract more creators and more work. And then the third, to expand the work and the reach of the film office, um, you know, Guy is doing a, an amazing job and holding a large ownership over this work. And I feel like um, we can all rally around him and, and try to help strengthen the work of that film office. Um, like Louisiana, like we mentioned there, they have an entertainment office. I've, as we've looked at other models around the country, you have sometimes film included with music, entertainment, gaming, et cetera. That could be a possibility, you know, could the film office be expanded so that there's longer or, you know, larger support, more staff, um, and as such additional budgets to do more aggressive marketing and outreach to the industry. So I wanted to share kind of that summary section and I would also love to ask if you all have any access to additional data um, that we can add to this, this narrative. Uh, I think, you know, to Amy's point, as she uh, so helpfully, you know, reminds us is that, you know, data is, tells a, a very strong story. And so wherever we can add to that, it would be great. And then a lot of this is uh, very similar to what, how it was in terms of a lot of the details. I did update the data based on uh, Guy's most recent numbers. Um, and I will load this in the um, Google Drive if you all want to um, revisit it, you know, do another review and offer any feedback or comments. Secretary, do you want to add anything? I'm sorry, Susie, do you want to add anything here? No, no. Well, yes. First and foremost, I would like for everybody to give a virtual applause to Mrs. Swain. Um, she has, <laughs> she, you could curtsy, you know, um, curtsy. we, uh, that we couldn't have done this without Catherine. I mean, she's just, she's been on, stayed on top of this report and engaged in this report. And we are grateful to all of the hard work you put in. Um, we know this is in addition to your daily, uh, responsibilities as marketing director at DNCR. So we thank you. Thank you. Um, and I want to tell you all also that the governor's office has reviewed this as what we consider to be the final draft. Um, uh, we're happy to give um, a little bit of time um, for you all to, to, to tighten anything up um, or uh, make a, an addition that you think is, is critical to the discussion. And then we'll, we'll be turning the report over to the governor. The timing of it, I think, is... Um, is good because we feel like, uh, well, we know that, that, you know, they're in the process of their budget planning and the budget document that comes out of the governor's office is largely a, a policy document and, and, a, and a direction, a plan for the state, if you will. So um, it'd be good timing for this to come out while he's working through those issues. And, um, and then follow their lead uh, an industry lead on where things take place in the legislature this coming session. Um, the, there is uh, a lot going on. There's a lot in the balance in terms of the monies related to COVID-19 uh, recovery. Um, I know that there's, there's a, a lot of response happening because, excuse me, my phone went off. Um, a lot of recovery activity going on. So there's, there's just a lot happening at, at, at the state level this year that will impact how our budget is formed. Um, so I just, I just want everybody to keep that in mind. The good news is that we have already seen an incredibly strong start to the year and we're only a month and a half into it. So things are definitely trending in a positive direction. Um, you know, they're going to be, uh, there's always going to be the politics associated with 
anything state government does. So I'd like to try to to uh, navigate through those things and um, allow the legislature to to sort of come along when they when they really believe when they really begin to see you know, what the message is now and what the numbers really are and how we've pulled together um, a, a very diverse group of, of people for this discussion. And um, if that needs expanding on, we can do that as well. So um, the next steps I would like is for y'all to take a couple of days and we'll give you a hard deadline just to one last review, then we will, we will turn this over to the governor's office and, um, Next, we would like to to work with subcommittees to implement those top three things that um, Catherine um, highlighted in the report earlier. So um, I'll turn it over, open it up to questions. I'd like to um, just just add one thing to the report, um, and it speaks specifically to Catherine's request for uh, data. Um, for those of us who are working on workforce development, uh, within the state who don't have kind of um, this an infrastructure through which we're working, there's no such thing as data because we're scrambling uh, with no capacity to kind of support and develop and evolve. And so I feel like there needs to be just a small paragraph or a side note about those of us who are doing some type of workforce development um, in different regions of the state because there there are quite a few. Um, Eric Johnson was just on a panel discussion. Uh, the Luminal Theater out of South Carolina did some programming through Sundance, through the last uh, Sundance Film Festival. And there was a panel discussion about um, African-American filmmakers in North Carolina and South Carolina. And so this issue came up about workforce development and infrastructure on that panel discussion. And so I just wanted to add that to the mix. I think it's extremely important to talk about, you know, those of us who don't have the resources to be able to uh, do that type of assessment. So we don't have the data, but we have the need and we have, uh, we know the other people who are working within the state doing that kind of work. And I know that uh, Darla, if she's still with us um, from our uh, from my um, I, I know they've been doing some work on workforce development as well. So I think that's a um, as well as as many other things. So Darla, I don't know if you want to expand on workforce development a little bit. Sure. I mean, we are just not necessarily just getting started, but we're just getting started with the rollout in regards to a larger program. Um, we have definitely made it clear that the goal for the labor side is to increase the opportunities for diversity. Um, now, you know, we want skill sets, so we want to make sure people have the opportunity to train and get those skills. So that has definitely been a push that we have. And Monday, it'll be very interesting to see how things go. I know we've placed someone through workforce development on a couple of the sets working with COVID, which we haven't really talked about here, but I can tell you that unfortunately this pandemic has created opportunity for job growth there in film and television as well uh, with the institution of the return to work protocols that try to keep people as safe as possible. So that's, that's the best answer I can give you right now. Susie will know more on Monday and see how it goes. I think we have about 30 folks that have committed to participate. We have a panel of filmmakers preparing to uh, provide their insight and tell stories about what the glamorous life behind film and television look like. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. Thank you. I just want to add a, a, a quick tweak to um, kind of how we perceive going forward with this conversation around uh, diversity and opportunities. There are people who are already trained. There are a lot of people who are already trained in these professions. So. I think we have to kind of work on finding ways to connect your efforts with the people who are already trained to do the work. Uh, this isn't because we. what happens is that we oftentimes end up creating these training programs, uh, trying to get more people assuming that they're not trained, 
but a lot of people who are already trained are just waiting for an opportunity. Um, once again, referring that Sundance panel that, that Eric Johnson was on. So if anybody ever needs um, any type of groundwork that needs to be done in terms of finding the people that you're trying to reach, please, I'm, I'm so willing and, and ready to help you with that initiative. Great, then we should talk offline as soon as we're done here today. Good. Thank okay. you. All right. Um, any other questions? Okay. Well, um, the, I guess our next order of business, Catherine, we, we talked about um, having two more meetings in 2021. Um, and so we, I don't believe, did we, you didn't put suggestions on the agenda, did you, Catherine? Okay. Well, we will, we will forward, uh, some, some set dates for us for those next two meetings, if, if that's okay with everyone. Um, but in the interim, again, we'd like to take the lead from Eric and Lauren's group, um, for, you know, sort of self-organizing and taking the bull by the horns on this. Um, and um, ask that uh, we, what, what Catherine and I will go back and do, I think, and with help from the uh, council as much as they want to give, and identify maybe um, some separate subcommittees and then ask someone to take the lead in convening those uh, two other committees. I think Eric and Lauren, you all have got one thing going already. Um, if it's if it doesn't complicate the work you've already done, I think you might want to pull some other sub, uh, some other council members into that mix. Um, so I think we should uh, have you reach out um, if you're interested in participating on um, the, the, what they're working on and what Camille is, is working on. And then we'll, we'll put together two other subcommittees and um, start to, to have that gel. And if it's okay with you all, instead of trying to do that right now, in a Zoom call, why don't we communicate those um, to you all in an email and then we can shift around as needed. Is, is, is that a plan? Does everybody agree we can do it that way? Okay. Specifically, we would we, we want to be looking at whatever we can do to support Guy in the film office um, with, with marketing. I mean, he is a one-man band. I do not know how he does it, but he does it. And so we're grateful to him. And um, we don't want to reinvent a wheel, but you know, we would like to offer um, that kind of, of support in long range planning, strategic planning, um, which would include some marketing. So um, with that being said, I think we can, um, like I said, we can gel and we can pull those things together uh, in the next coming, you know, two or three weeks. And, and then the subcommittees can come together and then we can report again at our next meeting. Okay. Any questions or comments about that? Any ideas? We're taking them. Just a comment. I mean, folks, we're trying to get some stuff done here, and this is a <laughs> pivotal time for the industry. So committees and subcommittees, that's great. But if there's work that we can all do in between, let's do it. And please reach out to each other. We know how to be in touch. Others listening in that aren't uh, part of this, this council officially, you know, be in touch. We want to, you know, by the end of this year, be looking back and celebrating and not just because the calendar year went by, this is as far as we were able to get. This is the year to really uh, make an impact. Guy, please reach out to us individually or groups or whatever, if there are things you're aware of, but um, my patience is gone and, and I want to see us <laughs> do this now. I don't want to be talking about this next year, this time. Well, you have really hit the ground running on, on your piece, Eric, and we, we appreciate it. We agree. Um, I'm surprised. I am surprised and pleasantly, obviously, by Guy's number already for this year. I mean, I was looking back at, I mean, if we're trending, you know, it could be another 2012 um, and, or close by, and that would, that would be a huge success for us. So I know things are happening all the time behind the scenes, so we're not trying to drag it out in meetings. I think the collaboration at that level that you're talking about, Eric, and that outreach is exactly the kind of thing that we need. And when we come back together, we bring bring those ideas to the table. So thank you for everything you all are doing. Um, and I'll just, I'll just, just oh, go ahead. Jim. I just want to make a specific ask to the council that if there's some 
a vendor or a crew member or cast member or somebody that you think should be interviewed, please reach out to us and we'll make sure that that happens. Um, and especially a, a particular region that you want us to hit. So mm -hmm. we look for that feedback, please. Great. Do we, do we have your contact information? This is Darla. I would love to make sure that you get a hold of some of the folks that, that we're working with locally. I, I can put it in the chat too. Sure. Okay, great. Yeah. And we, the, I think all of our information is shared with one another on the, uh, it, the, the it, it escapes me, not the web link, but the, the shared drive. And shared I will add, we do, I'll have a contact list. So I'll make sure that I'll, I send that out with the, the draft of the recommendations. Um, and I'll just kind of second what Eric said. This council is an amazing group of ambassadors for the state of North Carolina. And uh, I think we have just amazing opportunities to contribute, engage and support, you know, one another and and the film office to help us build a, a longer, more sustainable uh, growth industry around, you know, a lot of the amazing assets we already have. I'll read through some of those. <laughs> Trailblazer has done great work and is a very good partner from our experience at PBS North Carolina. Um, hi, this is from the Pretty Progressive. What other efforts aside from the film project are being made to lobby the lawmakers into changing the legislation? Um, then another, my brother is a film director in Miami. You should reach out to him and duplicate his success. I'll make the intro. And then there was a question, what are ways that non-council members can help in between these meetings? Okay. So good questions. And um, we can follow up in terms of um, some other folks who might be willing to assist. And um, I think if we do have kind of projects from the subcommittees, we can certainly engage non-council members for assistance and um, talk through, you know, bringing in folks who, who want to assist. Okay. All right. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Matt. Um, all right. Well, um, I know everybody's time is valuable. So um, I will just say thank you again to everyone. And I should have let off with this and I, I failed to do so, but uh, just in the interest of everyone's safety um, and security, I just want to uh, recognize and remember that uh, that we lost three lives last night um, in southeastern North Carolina, not anywhere near Wilmington, but um, in the lower reaches around Columbus County, Bladen County, I think, um, due to some bad storms and tornadoes. And these are things that um, we, we, that's just life and we're dealing with those things now. But amid this pandemic, um, it just uh, would like to reinforce it. Take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of each other, uh, wear your mask, um, socially distance, and um, we'll try to ride this out. There may be a couple of people that, uh, that you know that have already had that vaccine. So um, I know my parents have, and I know others have as well. And we're just hoping that that number gets higher every day so that we can figure out what our new normal is. So. Anyway, with that, I'll adjourn unless there's any other business we need to attend to today. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.